Hi, it's Tom from bkmnutrition.com and today I want to talk about the best food to eat around your workout. Now, let, I just want to make this clear from the start is that my background is a as a performance nutritionist. So I originally started working with uh, performance athletes such as mixed martial arts, bodybuilders, powerlifters uh, and cage fighters, that sort of thing. Those are my main customers for years. So what I was doing uh, for them was constructing very, very intricate diets which would, which would give them the optimal performance. Now this video is not a video for optimal performance athletes. I could go into real small nuances of, of what is necessary for a pre and post workout and intra workout formula for, for those type of athletes. But my main um, client base now is to work with people who want to lose body fat, people who have busy lives, work, work for their own business, run their own business, um, don't have a lot of time for to plan their nutrition and actually now just want to be able to eat, eat correctly and maximize the training that they can get done in their daily lives. So this is a video for you if you're that person. If you are an actual performance athlete, then um, there are other um, videos I can recommend that you watch, but this will not go into it. it. It won't be that deep dive. It will be something which is practically applicable for people who run their own businesses, are managers, and uh, and are basically looking to maximize the time that they have. So let's go into this. So you have three stages in the workout. You have pre-workout or before workout. You have intra-workout, so that's what's during and you have post-workout. Now, there's been a lot of talk, and this has normally come from, say, bodybuilding, because bodybuilding generally tends to be, although people don't like to admit that, generally tends to be where all these new methods get tried out and then they get pushed into uh, science, science researches them and then some of them are found to be rubbish and some of them found to be effective. And it's happened like that with performance sports for years is where the performance athletes and their coaches have tried these things, not really researched them, tried them, see if they've worked and then it's come down the line and, and eventually it's been researched and maybe comes into into facts and actual science and other times it goes, no, that's not working, it's just, it's just a placebo effect or whatever. So we're gonna talk about the things that potentially are actually useful rather than the things that have been, <coughs> excuse me, that have been done for years and potentially aren't useful and maybe just a placebo effect. So um, let's talk about before pre-workout what should you be eating pre-workout now uh, i'm going to cover it from two angles if optimal muscle gain is your uh, is your uh, is your end goal or if fat loss is your end goal so if optimal muscle gain is your end goal then your calories should be in a surplus so you shouldn't be too worried about how many calories you're eating in the day okay we don't want to stuff ourselves and go massively over and get massively fat but in order to gain optimal muscle and have optimum performance in the gym, <coughs> excuse me, we do need a, a surplus of calories. So what I would say for pre-workout, if, if muscle building is your, is your optimal goal, is you probably want to have some element of protein. You probably want to have some element of carbohydrates. I probably wouldn't have a high fat food at this point. Now there are some people who, who, was, who, who argue to the death that, that a high protein, high fat meal is one of the best things you can do before you train with weights. Now, um, I, I wouldn't agree with that. Uh, I have actually, in my time as a bodybuilder, I used to train uh, first thing in the morning and I used to have uh, burgers and eggs and uh, I think some chicken sausages uh, before I before I trained. Now this was a protein and fat meal, and um, and I found it beneficial for for me for my training um, only for the fact that I wasn't lugging myself down with carbohydrates first thing in the morning, and I could have more carbohydrates later on in the day. So it was a personal choice for me. Although I have also eaten eggs and bagels in the morning, which is carbohydrates, proteins, and fats, uh, and I. I would say I didn't see any difference, and this is just me, from having uh, either protein and fat or protein and carbs in the morning. Um, however, if you look at some science that's been researched, when people have had carbohydrates before training, that has led to a slight increase in performance. Uh, even there, are, there is some interesting studies about people having mouthfuls of carbohydrates, spitting them out, and then performing exercise and being better 
than um, say people who just had a, a water mouth swill and they adjusted for taste and stuff like that. So there was no, uh, there's no placebo effect of oh it's carbs, it's gonna make me better. Um, so if we, if we take that into what's best for you to trade, if you are if you're looking for muscle building, I would say you do want some carbohydrates and you do want some fats. You don't need loads of carbs in this situation. You just need enough to give your body a sense of oh I've eaten carbohydrates and now I can really go to town on my workout. Um, I would say what I've used in the past with clients is that 30 grams to 50 grams is around about the right amount here. Um, you don't want to load too much down in your stomach. So if you're having a massive carb meal before you train, remember you've got to go into the gym and train and all the blood's going away from your stomach and is going into your muscles and that can lead to stomach upset and potentially being sick. So what you don't want to do is have a massive carbohydrate meal before you train. Personally, I, with, and with clients I've worked with, I use things like Muller rice or Rice Krispies or uh, maybe uh, a bagel or um, scotch pancakes. Uh, and, and remember, this isn't fat loss we're talking about. This is optimal muscle gain. So we're looking for carbohydrates are going to be very quickly digested, get into your system fast so that, okay, they might not be highly effective in your workout, but they will keep your blood glucose high so you can preserve your muscle glycogen. And that's really important for potentially uh, for, for how much you can output in the, in, in the workout. So the, the, all these things are uh, complex carbohydrates, yes, but they're refined carbohydrates. Now, there is, uh, there is obviously complex carbohydrates like oats and white rice and stuff like that, which are essentially unrefined. And so what happens is they take longer to digest. Uh, and obviously you've got simple uh, sugars, simple carbohydrates, which are things like, well, basically Lucozade or fruit. Um, I, I've, all, I've had fruit before I train. That's absolutely fine. I, at, at the moment, I have a banana before I go and do my morning workouts. I don't have anything else. I just have a banana. Um, the presence of carbohydrate from the banana generally tends to give me a, a nice boost. Um, but if we're talking about optimal muscle gain, I would probably have about 40, 50 grams of um, potentially starchy, but also very refined carbohydrates. So bagel, rice krispies, rice krispies squares sometimes, one of my clients have, um, scotch pancakes, uh, muller rice is a favorite because you can buy that at any, um, any super, uh, supermarket. Um, and if you are looking to really go to town, you might want to have about 30 grams of protein. So a scoop of protein with that. So if we're going to extrapolate that into what would be a pre-workout meal, you might want to have one scoop of protein with a banana, one scoop of protein with a Rice Krispie square. Something very simple, very quick. You can mix up in your car on the way to the gym. Don't advocate driving when eating. Um, but you can have it, it's very quick, it's very simple, because most of us, if we are working and we're training in the evening, will probably be having our pre-workout meal at work. So it's no good me saying here, oh yeah, get on the stove and make up all this thing and have a nice little plate and everything else. That's not gonna fly for most of my clients and for probably most of the people watching this video. You want to have something, you can just get out your work bag and go, right, shaker, uh, fruit, or something grabby that I can just eat on my hands, and then you're off to the gym. So things like Rice Krispie Squares, um, Scotch pancakes, muller rice, uh, pieces of fruit, banana really, um, work really well for that and, and obviously a protein shake. Um, you might want to have like a grenade shake because they're obviously just sealed and everything else just shake it and, and, and off we go. Didn't even have to take a protein sh shake, you can just put it in the bin afterwards. Um, so that would be, I would say, not an optimal meal, but something that would that would give most people a good, a good pre-workout kick in terms of their their nutrition. Now, if we're talking about um, a fat loss diet, you can still have some of those things as long as you incorporate that into your calories for the day. Uh, obviously, muscle muscle gaining, optimal muscle gaining, we're not worried really about calories, so we can have maybe one or two bananas or a couple of scotch pancakes or whatever. You know, we can have more of that food in order to bump up the carbohydrates before we train. Now, it's been shown that having protein pre-workout um, can spike what's something called muscle protein synthesis, which is the reaction you get from the body when you ingest protein or when you train with weights to stimulate muscle building. So having uh, a whey protein, about 30 grams of good quality whey, or you know steak or chicken, but you don't want to be eating that before um, before training. If you have that before you train, you're potentially pushing the, the, the boundary towards being optimal in terms of your muscle gaining. So if you are a bodybuilder or someone looking to bulk up uh, and gain maximum muscle, probably a whey protein shake of one scoop of whey protein shake with a banana or muller rice, whatever, that is going to be 
good for what you want to accomplish. Now remember, you've got to wait for it to get out of your system. So I wouldn't be having that within half an hour of training. I'd probably be having that about an hour before you train. And then so it's out of your system when you get to the gym. When you are in the gym, uh, I would suggest that um, you probably don't have anything when you're, when, you're, when you're drinking, when you're working out. Now, the reason for this, and, and I know there is a lot of, say, bodybuilding coaches, and there's a lot of uh, performance coaches and everything else who will swear blind that you must have a intra-workout fast-acting casein shake, uh, or you must have uh, BCAs or, or EAAs, so essential amino acids or branched amino acids, or a scoop of what's called dextrin, which is a, which is a very simple, uh, sort of complex carbohydrate, but it's in a uh, structure that allows you to digest it really fast. Now, all of these things I've tried, and I must say that having um, fast-acting uh, casein during my workout was horrible. It tasted horrible, it smelled horrible, and uh, I wouldn't recommend it to anybody. And there's, and there's actually, I pretty much think there's actually zero research behind it being effective. So I, I wouldn't be doing that. It's probably a waste of your money. Although it was big on the bodybuilding scene a couple of years ago. I don't know if it is now. I'm not really that massively in touch with the bodybuilding scene anymore. But, um, but it used to be really big a couple of years ago. And, it, and it, you might find some people still promoting it. You don't need to have that. Don't have an intra workout protein shake. Don't need to have that. Especially if you've had a protein shake pre-workout. You definitely don't need it then. Um, branched amino acids, essential amino acids. Um, there is an argument for having um, amino acids, essential amino acids, because this again can help spike muscle protein synthesis. Um, the main principal amino acid is leucine responsible for this, and the essential amino acids uh, prolong this spike and boost it up. So, and that's why things like whey protein are so good because they have all the essential amino acids in them, in the right amounts. Um, now. If you've had a, pre -pro a protein shake pre-workout, you won't need that intra workout. Um, personally, I do have a scoop of branched amino acids in my water when I'm training. The only reason I do that is because I own a gym and it's free for me to have that powder and it makes, makes my intra workout water taste better. That's the only reason I have it. So I'm having it for me. It helps my hydration point of view because I'm not a fan of the taste of water. I like to have things like sugar-free squash. Um, and BCAs are something that it won't harm me to have it. And it makes my water taste a bit nicer. And potentially there's a, a very, very small, uh, excuse me, a very, very small chance that it might help my recovery ever so slightly. Um, but it's not going to harm me. So I don't mind doing it. But I wouldn't recommend anybody else do it. If you want to do it, that's fine. But it's probably not going to give you any sort of performance edge. It's probably not going to give you any muscle, muscle building edge. If you like the taste of your water with BCAs in, absolutely fine. Um, some people have a scoop of cyclic dextrin in their drink. Now, cyclic dextrin is a complex carbohydrate. The structure of it allows the body to digest it very, very quickly, almost as almost quicker than dextrose, if, I, if I'm reading the research right. Now, I have had... Uh, intra workout drinks with cyclic dextrin in and I can say maybe it did give me a little bit of a performance boost maybe it's just placebo but if it's a performance boost and you're looking for optimal muscle building and part of that is getting as much out of your workout as you can then why not it's not going to harm you it's not going to harm you to have it cyclic dextrin is one of the safest things you probably can have intra workout um, but just be aware if your goal is fat loss then having extra calories from carbohydrates inside your workout, which potentially aren't necessary for a good workout, aren't going to help you. So if you're on a fat loss mission, I probably would not have an intra-workout carb. It's probably not needed. And I would actually, I would go to smile and say it's definitely not needed because if you can eat something pre-workout, you're always gonna have that mental signal. And most of my clients, if they are dieting for fat loss, prefer to eat their food because it lasts longer and you can savor it a bit better. Cyclodextrin doesn't taste of anything, it's just like water, so it's not a very nice thing. You're having carbs which don't taste of anything, you don't even know you've eaten something, um, but the calories are still there. So if you're on a fat loss mission, I'd probably only have a scoop of BCAs or EEAs in your intra workout water if you like the taste of uh, the, the powder. And um, there's probably no benefit to you having it if you've had a a pre-workout protein shake. If you haven't had a pre-workout protein shake, then a scoop of essential amino acids is probably going to help you, but probably not as much as it needs to the cost of it to outlay, because you can come to post-workout and have an, an, a protein shake post-workout, and it will do the same job as in it will help uh, boost muscle protein synthesis. So now let's go to post-workout. 
post-workout that people talk about the anabolic window and you must get food in 45 minutes in order to be anabolic and to get the most out of the benefits there's actually no basis for that at all and there are other more educated people on the internet who will go into all the intricacies of it i could probably find the research if i wanted to and i have looked at it for my qualification but it's not something i really look at now um the 45 minutes actually is a carbohydrate window and the uh, post-workout you have this massive availability in your body to absorb carbohydrates it's called non-insulin dependent glucose uptake and it's how uh, diabetics can also benefit from having their carbohydrates post-workout um, not that i'm advising anything for diabetics just want to make that clear don't advise on medical stuff um, if you have, uh, you can absorb up to two grams per kilo of carbohydrates post-workout within that 45 minutes. Um, so you can actually get a lot of your carbohydrates in to replenish your glycogen stores. Now, here's, here's where we need to make a real start um, disclaimer here, is that I don't advocate, even for people who are looking to bulk up, bodybuilding, that sort of thing, massive, massive carbohydrate feeds post-workout. Now, here's the reason why. <clears throat> excuse me is because most bodybuilders will train a body part excessively as in, in what they need for bodybuilding probably once a week uh, i have a program that trains body parts twice a week that's research based evidence why, why i've constructed it that way but even with that they're not training to the massive massive level that some people smash legs or smash chest or whatever um but even with that, and, and, and this has been researched, and people will say, oh, I'm doing it to restore my glycogen levels because I've emptied my muscles of glycogen. There was research done, and it was research, there was research done on actual bodybuilders, so it's not just a, a running study. Um, the, these bodybuilders did a leg session, which was horrible. It was front squats, rear squats, leg press, I think some leg extensions at the end. Tough, tough workout, absolute failure on the, on the on, on the on the exercises and they measured their muscle glycogen afterwards and the muscles were only 40 percent depleted of glycogen and that's a horrible leg workout now even if you're you know mr universe bodybuilder at the pro pro level which most people aren't let's let's be honest and most people training gyms are not at that level um you might go to 50 percent or even 60 but you're never gonna fully deplete your muscles of glycogen. So if your muscles are only 40 to 50% depleted of glycogen, do you really, really need that amount of carbohydrates to restore it back to full levels? Probably not. And actually the research has shown that over 24 hours with sufficient carbohydrates, glycogen stores are recovered fully. Now this is why bodybuilders don't need massive amounts of carbohydrates post-workout and this is why you don't need it if you're just someone who's looking to bulk up and gain muscle and look you know look good and, and look better what will happen is most likely is a lot of that carbohydrates you're you're eating will turn to fat and yeah you'll gain weight but a lot of it will be fat because there's only so much carbohydrates the body can store in the muscle before it must go somewhere else now if it's not in the muscle it can go into the liver but only a small amount in the liver then you've got fidgeting and, and, uh, and, and increased body temperature. That's a small amount that's gonna go. It might increase your knee activity, so you move around more. But if you're left with a massive, massive surplus of carbohydrate, there's a very high likelihood it's gonna end up as fat. <clears throat> Not discounting all the fat that you've eaten in your diet as well, which in a surplus potentially is gonna go to fat as well. So all these bodybuilders who are, who are utilizing these massive, massive meals post-workout, and these coaches who are giving their clients, their mainstream clients, I'm talking about people who work in, in businesses and, and, on, and offices who don't actually smash their, their legs that much or their chest that much or whatever in their workout. Um, they're giving them these massive high calorie protein uh, carbohydrate feedings after workout. You don't need that, you absolutely don't. You can go up to two grams per kilo. For me, that's like nearly 200 grams of carbohydrates post-workout, that's a lot. You know, that, that's a lot of carbohydrates to eat. And I'd probably feel a bit sick after having that. But there are people who advocate more than that. Like three grams per kilo po post-workout. You really don't need that. Post-workout, all you really need is a protein shake. If we're talking maximizing muscle building, because the protein shake will start to build your muscles and start to recover your muscles. Carbohydrates, <clears throat> excuse me, do nothing for building your muscles, as in building new muscle tissue. They just provide glycogen for your muscles. Now, carbohydrates are also protein sparing, so if you're in a fat loss environment, you might want to have some carbohydrates post-workout. 
just so that the protein you've ingested is all going towards the muscle. So you might want to incorporate some carbohydrates post-workout. And what I generally tend to do is I'll have a small bit of, say, rice or something with some fish or some chicken or something. This is if I was dieting. If I was dieting for a bodybuilding show, that's what I'd have. Nowadays, I'm just looking to keep a leaner body. Post-workout, I'd probably just have two scoops of protein shake and a little bit of creatine in, because creatine is good for performance. And then I'll have a proper meal an hour later with some protein and carbohydrates in. I don't generally tend to have any carbohydrates apart from maybe a banana with my post-workout shake because it's not needed. It's not needed to overload my muscles with a ton of carbohydrates post-workout. When And I train hard, but I know from the science and the research that's been done that it's probably unlikely that I've depleted myself more than 30-40%, which I can more than fill up over the course of the next 24 hours with my with my nutrition, with my other meals, when I mean, it'd be more nice to eat a few more meals with carbohydrates and not get fat, rather than trying to stuff a load of carbohydrates post-workout. <clears throat> so post-workout, what I would suggest, if you're in a fat loss environment uh, or, or looking for, you know, fat loss is not optimal, uh, one to two scoops of protein, depending if you're male or female, um, some creatine, because creatine does help with muscle performance and does help with athletic performance. And it's been shown that probably the best time to take it is post-workout. Um, and or let's, just a little one there is that is that creatine taken pre-workout will not do anything for your in, for your workout that day. It has to be manufactured into the body into some other products which then get recycled in the muscle. So that takes time. So don't take creatine before your workout, take it after your workout. Um, if you're in an optimal muscle building um, scenario, so you want to bulk up, you're, you're not really too concerned about fat gain, then yeah, I'd have probably probably up to 100 grams of carbohydrates, maybe 200 if you're quite a big guy um, or girl, and uh, probably about 40, 50 grams of protein, because why not have loads of protein? It's not de detrimental to your kidneys to have more, so I would probably err on the side of having 40 to 50 grams. Even if you're a woman, I'd probably have that, um, if optimal muscle building is your, is your goal. Um, and, and that's it. So I wouldn't, I wouldn't go to the extremes that some people have put on. Uh, the body does not like extremes. If you overload it with too much food, it will kick back against you, make you feel sick, or store uh, excess food as fat. So just to recap, if you're in a fat loss environment, pre-workout, probably a protein shake and a banana, uh, or another piece of fruit. Intra-workout, nothing, apart from maybe a scoop of EAs or BCAs in your water, and, and that's the only flavor of the water. You can have Vimto if you want. I like Vimto, sugar-free Vimto is quite nice. Um, post-workout, uh, maybe another banana, and uh, 40 to 50 grams of protein. That's probably all you need for a fat loss environment, obviously depending on your calories, but you're having a little bit of carbs pre-workout, a little bit of carbs post-workout, um, and then you can go off and have the rest of your carbs in your meals, which is gonna be more, it's gonna be nicer to do that if, you're, if your calories are limited, rather than smashing them all around workout. <coughs> Excuse me. If you're in an mu optimal muscle building environment, then yeah, I'd probably have 30 to maybe 60 grams of carbohydrates from uh, refined complex sources, so muller rice, scotch pancakes, um, maybe rice crispy square cereal, pre-workout with um, with a protein shake. And what I used to do when I was bodybuilding was to get some rice krispies and pour the whey over it. So it's like a, a breakfast meal with a, with whey as the milk. Um, intra workout, you might want one to two scoops of cyclic dextrin. Probably one's enough. Um, to help maybe keep your blood levels stable with glucose through, through the workout, although it's probably not necessary. You might want some BCAs or EEAs to flavor it. Um, a burn is probably not gonna do anything in terms of muscle building. And then post-workout, probably one up to about 100 grams of carbohydrates, depending on your size, and I would say 40 to 50 grams of protein plus some creatine. So if you keep it nice and simple like that, it's easy to remember, you're not overloading the digestive system, and it's not overloading your, your, your day in terms of all the prep you've got to do for it. All these things can easily be taken to work in a bag and, and not form like a massive satchel of food, so you're walking around looking like you've got a suitcase full of food. Um, so that will, that will probably help most most people watching this uh, like i said if you are a bodybuilder or or, or or someone who's looking for more sort of a performance edge um then those those will form the basics but you might need a little bit more than that but then you're in the top one to two percent of the people who are watching this uh, in terms of your genetic ability so you probably do want a little bit more so but for the rest of us what i've just laid out will be sufficient and probably more cost effective as well uh, so I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, give it a like, a thumbs up, uh, share it if you want to. I'll put all the details I've just outlined in the comments below so you can quickly reference it. And, um, and I'll so see you on the next video. Thanks for watching.